Hi everybody, this is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett, welcome. Today I'd like to continue discussion about the reclaiming control of your nervous system and learning how to consciously, intentionally, volitionally activate your capacity to do without triggering the preconscious stress response. And this is something that I think is super important for your Kung Fu, but even more important for everything else you're doing. Because we carry around a lot of tension. And uh, just about anyone I've ever met has some unconscious tension, which uh, by definition, they're not aware of. And uh, the, but it's easy to find if you just you know, take a moment and, and, and activate it. And what that is, is there's the pre-conscious mind, the, the mind that is not yet conscious is handling 99% of what's going on in your daily life. And it's uh, very little of what's going on is actually under your control. So it looks like that you know, you're kind of just marching through life and the, uh, the, the, everything is running itself. And to some degree it is, but we accumulate a lot of uh, baggage along the way, which makes it less and less efficient as we go on. So learning how to be able to focus inward and notice these points of, of tension, these points where we're holding, holding tension, which cause excessive wear and tear. You'll notice it in various injuries that you'll accumulate, various, you know, just chronic pains in your in your knees or your back or your neck or whatever. And it'll manifest, you know, in, in arthritis, because arthritis happens whenever we, particularly osteoarthritis happens whenever we are using things inefficiently and they just wear out. And so there's a lot of rubbing and, and we get so acclimated to these holding patterns, these points of tension, that it's even a little scary sometimes to let go of them because they are reassuring. Even if they are not particularly good for us, they, we have, that's the devil we know. So part of what we're gonna be doing tonight talking about is going a little deeper into that and, and establishing some of the underlying principles that, that guide us here. And I think probably the most important one is our ability to relax that extraneous muscular tension depends primarily on feeling safe. If you can feel safe, then there's an ability to let go. You may not necessarily do it just because you're feeling safe, but you at least have that, that option. And we feel safe when we have a structure which supports us in a way that is um, substantial and and it's dependable, predictable, and efficient. So a lot of what we're doing in these classes is to explore how we can make our structure a little bit better so that we can, we can feel safe, we can then let go of, of that tension. And a lot of the tension, a lot of the, those, those pre-conscious holding patterns are so deeply held that they're way below your, your ability to find them easily. And uh, someone will be so forbidding that you'll immediately let go of any attempt to correct them. But if we approach it in a very gentle way, we can, we can, we can beat that. We can take over control of things which up to this point have just been in a re reactive responsive mode. The, uh, there's a Chinese expression, uh, nei shi, 
which is means uh, an inward looking or, and she is also a, um, uh, a term for teacher. So you can think of it as like a, an, uh, an inner teacher. That is whenever you bring your awareness inward, what we uh, can call uh, enteroception, we uh, inward looking, then enable, it becomes a teacher. We learn how to, uh, how things might go a little bit better. And the point of making last week was that the accumulated insults that the body mind gets over the course of living act, create this um, uh, epigenetic noise. And epigenetics is the study of how your internal and external environments affect your genetic expression. So you have a characteristic DNA pattern, which is you and you, you and you alone. And then, but the, uh, how those genes express themselves is quite variable. And it's affected by your environment, affected by all the environmental factors that you encounter, including what you stuff in your face, including how you exercise and, and including your emotional climate and all kinds of things. So all those things affect your genetic expression. If we can create more coherence within the system, if we can create more stability and uh, dependability in the structure, then we can let go some of that noise and allow the DNA to express itself in the way that it's you know, designed to do. It, the body mind will seek the optimum solution based on the information that you give it. So uh, if there are problems, you can probably guess that that's still your body mind trying to figure out how to solve that riddle. And we can help it out by creating structures which allow the energy to flow where we want it to flow. So you think of all fluids, think of water or air or whatever, they follow the path of least resistance. And the same thing is true of chi. It follows the path of least resistance with the body. So if you set up a structure that doesn't have a lot of interference in it, a lot of noise in the system, then you're gonna have a better flow. And two principles, primary principles of Chinese medicine are have lots of qi and have it flow smoothly. And if you do that, if it flows efficiently, smoothly, and you have lots of qi, then you're probably gonna do the best you can with what you got. So um, this nei shi, this ability to study your, yourself means slowing things down quieting things down. And that's why Tai Chuan is such a perfect vehicle for this exploration. And the language of the body mind is feeling. It undercuts all the other senses and it's like, it's non-local, your whole body feels. So you get a chance to tune into that. It's learning how to feel is the, the entry point. It's the doorway into all that higher level stuff, all the really cool Jedi stuff that we do comes from, starts with that, learning how to feel. And so slowing that down and, and doing that, and that every time we do that, every time we consciously, intentionally, volitionally feel, not as just something that just happens to us and washes over us, but we put our mind and we reach out and, and sense what's going on, we have this, it shifts. It brings you into the present moment. It shifts your brain. It creates new neural connections and it creates more energetic coherence throughout the whole system. So the uh, one thing that We've been discussing the last few weeks, and I'd like to go over it again and really dig into it a little bit this time because it's it's really crucial. 
And um, that is an exercise to help to get more sung kwa. And the, the, the concept of sung is you know, releasing and, and relaxing and sinking into the intrinsic structure of the body mind that provides a foundation which then we can extend outward and do stuff. We can do lots of cool stuff, but provided we have that. And the problem we have with a lot of the, the way we're programmed is we think do first. And we, we, we miss that essential quality of sung that is necessary to, uh, to make that happen. So the learning to feel first then do is a very high level skill and uh, and doing you slow it down so that it becomes a very conscious, deliberate, intentional thing that you do. And then as you get good at it, like anything else, the better you are, the more practice you are at doing something deliberately and consciously and intentionally, the less and less effort it takes to make it happen. You can't just skip to the effortless part without having done the work. And that's the essence of Kung Fu, which is intensive effort over time. And so we want to do that. So the, uh, one of the questions that came up was the, how do we walk and incorporate these things. Just a simple idea about just walking down the street. And uh, Maria and I were taking a walk today in the park and, and she's been doing a, a real focused intention with, this, uh, with this, this practice that is, you know, really going into the neishi and feeling that you're going, so it's not a thing of like how much farther, how much faster, how much longer can I walk? You know, can I, you know, push it, push it, push it? No, it's the opposite. It's gliding effortlessly, moving along, and noticing when the body mind says, uh uh, this is too much, and then backing off. So rather than pushing through it, which is the way a, a lot of us, particularly us, us athletes, you know, we're trained, it's like, yeah, just, you know, no pain, no gain, push on through. It's like, no, no, back off and feel, feel what's going, and how can I reprogram my body mind so that I can make this even more effortless? So that there's this effortless expression of my movement. And so whenever we're, we're walking, the one area we really wanna focus on is, is how we can get the Sung Kwa into each step. How can we feel that? Can we relax into that? And uh, it runs counter to uh, an idea which I think a lot of people have, and it's really prevalent in you know, a lot of the uh, exercise community, things like that. And you know, the idea of buns of steel, having you know, like a really tight ass is, is, is considered to be this, this very sexy, very desirable thing. And it's kind of the opposite of what we're going for. As Sifu Valerie uh, said uh, last week, you know, we're going for a squishy baby butt. And uh, that, uh, that, that, I like that, I like that, that image. And uh, so you, you know, you want to be able to let go of that tension there in your butt as you're walking, as you're, you know, going through your form as you're able to do the exercise. So that requires a bit of this practice, a bit of this neishi, and doing an exercise that allows you to home in on a specific way of moving, a specific way of activating your, your body connections. So the Exercise I, I showed a couple of weeks ago, I'd like to do again. And this time really take, take some time with it and, and talk you through it. 
one of the keys is um, particularly when you're starting out, use something you can put your hands on to support. So in this case, I'm going to use a, a standard issue kitchen chair and uh, so the idea here is I want I want to be able to trust this because if I can't depend on that, I'm going to clench my butt. I'm going to clench my hips. I'm going to tighten up. And so to be able to have hips that are, are smooth and efficient, you need to be able to get the, the, all those muscles which are desperately trying to keep you safe and, and allow, give them instructions to relax, to, to let go. And it helps if you have something to hold on to. You don't have to put any weight on it, but you just want to have it there as a as a guide, as a training wheel, so so that you can then let go. Because it is the letting go that is our uh, our goal here. Face there, there we go. So I'm going to put my right foot forward, pick up my my left heel. So once you stand up, and if you have a something you can hold on to, that would be great. Because it's real easy if I if I were to just demonstrate it without and just say if I'm going like this and then coming up like that and, and and people will try to do it but not necessarily the right way. They can accomplish the what it looks like, but not necessarily get the internal part, which is squishy baby butt. Okay, so you want to get that. So you put the right foot forward, pick up your left heel, and you want to set the knee. So the knee is not going to move at all. And you're going to be moving, you're going to be bowing from the claw, from the, from the inguinal crease right here. So and you're bowing straight forward as you do this. And so we're learning to really trust as we bow forward, keep the spine straight, and you're moving from from the uh, from the the claw. You're relaxing down and sinking into the earth as you do that. This leg is is totally empty. You just have a toe down just to as a marker. But you you bow forward, and then you come up, and just really you want to feel that. And bow. So the very slowly and letting go as you're going, and you don't want to back up at all. So you're really coming forward out over your foot as you do that. But that's okay. You've got if you're sinking down, releasing down, you have your central equilibrium, even though. You're pitched forward like this and then straighten up. So you're using it and you're relaxing your back muscles at the same time. So your back is straight, but you're releasing and bowing forward. And just hang there and just feel into that and, and then come up. and bow forward. What we're doing now is developing these muscles here on the front of the leg, the vastus medialis, which really don't get any kind of action at all, but they're crucial for the kind of work we're doing, and come up. And the more we can trust those, and you may find them talking back to you right now. We'll do one more. Um, because they don't get a lot of work. But the more you can work those, the more you can shift to using the front of your thighs as your support, as opposed to your back and your butt and the back of your legs and coming up. 
dead. Okay, let's turn that around. We we'll use the left leg now. So you really want to get nice and loosey goosey with that right leg. The right hip is really disconnected. And you're just using the quad, you're releasing it, allowing the weight of your body to, to drop down, to sink. Just a note, you are not shifting your knee forward. You are not going lower with your leg. You're just- Yeah, the knee, the knee is set. Notice that the knee is not moving at all. It's not moving, it's not going like this or back. It's going, not going to the side. I'm not spiraling down. I'm going just bowing straight forward as I'm doing this. And then come up and feel that. You feel yourself sinking as you come up. So we're working contradictory impulses there. One is everything down here is dropping. And so as I'm going forward, the same thing with my back, my, my torso, it's bowing forward also. I have my chair here, my trusty chair, to tell me that everything is just fine and I can really let go and really feel into my leg. And you'll notice muscles that you probably don't use very much. And that's okay. Because we're using, and when we're sung, it's a different kind of muscle power. And come up. Most of the time we're, we're thinking of the pushing away part and we're not thinking about the uh, taking a load part. And in muscle development, the, you know, like say you're doing a, a, a biceps curl. If you go like this, this is the yang part, right? The muscle is contracting. And then as you drop it slowly, it, there's more muscular development in that drop than there is in the coming up. And the same thing is true here with your sung in your legs. It's like, oh, there's, your muscles are getting more development by releasing down and feeling that support than they do when you're coming up. But even as I'm straightening up, it's not my, I'm not pushing away from the earth to do that. I'm just rocking from the, from the quad. Okay, so uh, any questions on that? Jonathan. Well, first, uh, shout out to Maria. Thank you for that. Um, uh, that help was very helpful, that correction. And also, I'm pretty sure you want us to be using that chair in a very light way because you can obviously put a lot of pressure on the chair too. Is that right? Um, you know, it doesn't really matter at first. Use as much as you need, just because okay. you want it. I the emphasis is on relaxing the hip joint, relaxing the the hips, the and the and the butt muscles and things like that. And if you got to put some some arm into it, that's fine. And okay. you'll, you'll gradually build it up so that you don't need the chair. But it's, uh, but you want to get it, you know, you wanna have that, that there as a support so you can do the important thing, which is get really soon and to learn to trust the soon. So anybody else? Any other questions? Dan, do you have something? You're on mute, Stan. You're on mute, Stan. Thank you. Uh, I noticed that uh, the front part of the leg gets a, quite a workout. For the little bit that we did, it is right. getting quite a bit of workout. That's right. Yeah. That I, I could say. Now, when you get out of chance, uh, I need to, it's not the same thing, but maybe a little later on, is, uh, for instance, when you're driving, I've gotten following your directions and all that, 
I'd gotten to the point where I'm a lot, a lot more relaxed, but I noticed over a period of time driving, the muscles still get like a stiff, and I keep pushing back my shoulders and uh, dropping it, but something is still not there. So like I said, when you get uh, towards that part, I'd like to go find out a little bit more about that. Um, sure, uh, just a, a couple of notes on driving, but that's, that's one, of those, one of those tricky things that, uh, first of all, is for, our, for a lot of us, it's a very stressful activity, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and so you, there's a tendency to you know, drive like, like that. And uh, so you know, you'll, you'll activate these primitive stress responses because basically your body mind is saying too much, too much, too much information, too much, yeah. And it, you want it to, to say, no, no, it's, it's all cool. So um, the, uh, you want to create a structure where the energy can flow where you want it to flow. Mm. So that, just keep that in mind, that date, that, that, that principle in mind, because then you get to design what that um, what that means to you. So let's say, for instance, you know, I used to get and to put on a long trip. I still will get a uh, you know I get a uh, uh, pain in my in my uh, like a sciatic kind of pain, and I realized that, that my accelerator requires that my foot turn out like this. So I'm I'm going along, and particularly if I'm you know driving for hours and I'm pumping my, my foot like that, it is causing, it's causing my butt to, to tighten up, at least the piriformis muscle, which then rubs against the sciatic nerve and then creates this pain down your leg. <laughs> so you're, you're jamming up your, uh, your, your sciatic as you're, as you're doing that. So you, uh, uh, so an, uh, a thing you can do as a driver is stop every now and then and just turn your toes in, get pigeon toed, bend your knees, and just stand like that, stand swung like that, and allow your hips to open up. Allow your sacroiliac joint, which is where the sacrum and the ilium meet there in the back, and allow that to open up and give it a little breathing room because it's been jammed up there tight. So that's it's one example of things you can do when you're driving. Another thing is, you know, use your elbows. Have, you know, get your, you're driving and you just reach with your elbows and you're, you have, you're opening the shoulder joint as you do that. When you do that, you create space in the shoulder joint and then, then it allows the energy to flow and allows your back, your neck, et cetera, to, to move around. So there's, uh, there's things you can do. And I guess there's, you know, it's, it's a, a, a lengthy discussion and people can maybe in a future conversation, people can, can describe any issues that they're getting with their particular, you know, driving habits. But uh, uh, the other thing is, you know, stop and, and take a break every now and then. And uh, another thing is breathe. And so people tend to hold their breath when they're, uh, when they're stressed out. And if you can breathe, then it's going to balance out your autonomic nervous system and gonna allow your parasympathetic to get more of a voice so you'd be able to recharge your batteries rather than rather than all uh, sympathetic nervous system all the time. Jonathan, you had something. Yeah, just to supplement that, uh, if you use cruise control on a long trip, you can turn your accelerator foot in, like reverse the angle of it for miles and miles. I find right. that very helpful. Yeah, me too, I agree. Yeah. Thank you on that. Um, I find with cruise control, you don't really have to have your foot on the gas. <clears throat> so right, but you just want to hear there anyway. You got your feet flat on the floor, and then it doesn't, then you don't have that problem. Um, <clears throat> but um, go back to the exercise. So it seems to me that you're releasing the quad, and you kind of want to relax all as many muscles as possible, except the front of the thigh, right? And even that, you're you're not relaxing it so much as allowing it to be sung. So it's that you're allowing the 
the support quality rather than the push away quality to happen. So in other words, instead of pushing away from the floor, you're sinking down into it. So it's, it's working a lot, but it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's entirely different from you know the from the, that young expansion. Okay. Well, it's yeah. I guess it's the burning that feels like it's working because it. <laughs> <laughs> and and yeah. to the extent that you, you're feeling it, it indicates you need it. And it's like, and it's it's one of those things that unless you're kicking a soccer ball a lot, you're probably not going to get a workout for your vastus medialis. And uh, so it's one of those things. It stabilizes the knee and it permits, it's the one muscle that connects your, your uh, kneecap to your, to your thigh, not to your thigh, to your uh, hip. And uh, all the others don't. So it's the one, if we are talking about Sung Kwa, that's the one that we want to work with. We want to work with that, that baby and, and that allows you to, to get uh, uh, more support there. Okay, cool. Anybody else? Oh, cool. Good, good, good. Okay, so moving on. Um, ah, yes. So, um, the um, This is real, real subtle, um, and uh, but really important for application of any any of this stuff. And um, it um, getting it is enables your Kung Fu to go to a whole different level. And we've kind of been skipping around on the surface of it uh, uh, recently, but I'd like to, to bear down and, and really focus on it because it is really easy to, to forget about when you actually need to use it. And the idea is that when you're meeting you are, there's a quality of intentional, um, not just contact, but your- there's Connection. Connection, okay. It's almost kind of like a penetration. So there's a, um, at, at some level you are extending into the object of your touch. So, um, and this is what activates the gin. You actually get in there, you feel, and then from there, you can use your gin to express the energy in really cool ways. But um, if you don't do this, then you'll find that your gin is just kind of dancing on the surface. And it doesn't have the, uh, the same quality that it will if you you um, activate. So the very simple thing that uh, I use, and I got this from playing push hands. And I know it's when I do this, things go really well. When I don't do this, not so much. So the um, very simple, yeah, take, an arm, let's say your left arm, and you take your hand and just place it on the on the on the arm. So the idea is that you're going to pull and then you're going to push. You're going to pull and you're going to push. Okay, so you're just going to slide it two different directions. No big deal. Now take it and put your hand on there. And as you're pulling, notice that 
the skin slides. Okay, you're sliding, your skin is sliding over the muscles. There's, there's a little slack in the system there. So if you're pulling on that, you're reaching with your elbow, reaching with my right elbow, and feeling that. So I'm actually requires enough contact, enough connection to be able to make that go. So just feel into that and notice that there's an energetic connection that you didn't have when you're sliding across. So there's a, and that's because you're activating the tensegrity of the connective tissue system when you do that. Not just yours, but your partners, whenever you do that, you're, you're creating a, a connection there that allows energy and information to, to travel super fast. You know, one guy said at the speed of light, but let's just say super fast. And uh, so you're just doing that. And then you go back and go the other direction and feel the skin moving in the other direction, sliding over the muscles. So slide this way, slide that way. You're not grabbing, you're just feeling on the surface, but you're allowing yourself to, to feel into the arm as you as you do that, feeling into the skin of the arm. So there's so you're pulling apart and then pushing together and pulling apart. So we're getting this is you know the pushing is a yin, a yang, the pulling is a yin. So we have this, we were doing it last week, you know, with it pulling in, this is a uh, uh, a yin expression, right? And that's the lu jin. And pushing out, you know, and that's a, a yang expression. And it's a, you know actually kind of a pong jin, but it's a, it's in the shape of a push. Because we're we get into on jin, which is what the actual push movement is. It is a little more complicated than that. But so it's more just just think of a yin and yang. So there's a yin, a yin as you're pulling back, and but what you want to do there is you want to feel that same contact with the air or space. Mm, you're feeling that as you feel when you're grabbing something substantial. You can also do it with, uh, let's say, my trusty chair here. You know, I can, I can just put my hand on that and just, you know, Feel that connection pull or push, you know, and you develop this sticky gin, this 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 quality of stickiness that allows you to penetrate into the into this thing, even though this is an inanimate object, I'm able to establish and meet this, establish a connection that allows me to move through that. It goes beyond just friction. It, there's a there's an intentionality. There is a quality of um, awareness that goes into it that enables me to make that make that stick. And then you can cultivate sticky gin so that it becomes becomes a very uh, fun thing to do in push hands, where you're just creating that little stickiness, which then it is very disruptive to to someone who doesn't expect that kind of thing. And so it, uh, it also allows you to tune into a higher level of your own application, your own Kung Fu to, to make that happen. But we practice it, you know, physically, you know, we just pull, push, pull, just feel that. And then we're going to take that and we're going to stick it into a rollback and a ward off and but using the empty space using the air whatever as your you want to feel into that so you're maybe imagine that is as, as if you are swimming in a, in a swimming pool 
only the air is has the viscosity of water. And so you're oh you're feeling that and you know you can have that sense of of pushing and pulling that and then you can create this energetic connection because the space is very even more insubstantial than the energy so then you that uh, uh, creates some uh, some really high high quality chi at that point. So uh, why don't we stand up and uh, let's, let's play with that. All right, so. Let's begin with our three pillars. Be hip width, feel the balls to your feet, set your knees, reach with the crown. We'll go through this kind of briefly today. Relax your lower back. Sink. Sung Kwa. Spiral down. Really allow your, your body to sink. Reach with your elbows. Feel your fingers, reach, point your index fingers, reach with those. Tuck in your chin. Open the shoulders, chest. Reach with the clavicular notch. All right, so now let's, uh, let's turn. Do it facing this way, the right foot forward. So, feel your, the ball of your right foot, set your right knee, and reach with your wrists. Reach with your fingers. Now feel the ball of your left foot, set the left knee, and release your left claw. You're bowing slightly, releasing down. And as you do that, you reach with your elbows. Feel the, feel the elbows, reaching with the fingers and turn. And as you're turning, you want to feel, you want to grab the space, grab the, the air with the palms of your hands. And you're pulling without any tension. You're feeling that viscosity. Feel in your hands. Feel the, the, the sensations there. Feel the energetic connection. You're reaching with your elbows, opening the shoulders, reaching with the crown. You feel the ball of the left foot, spiral down to the left. If you do that, reach with your elbows. You're releasing the claw, reach with the wrists, the fingers. Feel that. Feel the ball of the right foot at the right knee and release the claw, you're spiraling down. So again, you wanna feel that emptiness in your butt. You wanna feel it in the thigh and turn. And as you're turning very slowly, feel the viscosity. You're moving ever so slowly through this very viscous fluid and you're, as you're doing that, the neishi, your in, the inner looking, the inner teacher there is telling you what is the most efficient way to do that. How the the energy can follow the path of least resistance. And open the hands. Feel the ball of the left foot at the left knee. Spiral down to the right. Reach with the elbows. 
Feel the hands, feeling the space. And as you're turning, reaching out, feeling the viscosity. Pause and feel into your body. Feel the whole body energetic connection. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee. Release the quads, spiral down to the left. And as you do that, you're reaching with the elbows, the wrists, fingers are relaxed. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee. And release down into your right leg now. You're releasing that right quad, you're soon. You're spiraling down to the left. You're reaching with the elbows. Remember, you're feeling that moment, that emptiness, that stillness before we then activate and turn. Feeling the viscosity as we turn. Check your legs. You want to feel your leg really soft, sinking down. Your butt is very relaxed. Your quads very relaxed. You're feeling into the structure. You're feeling the support there. Now feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, and spiral down to the right. You're loading that up, opening the hands. Feeling that contact, reaching with the elbows. And turn. Feeling the viscosity. And turn. Let's come down and let's turn this around. We're going to go into the left leg now. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, bow forward. You're releasing, thinking down. Nice uh, sung qua, loading the leg. Check your, check your thigh. You want it to be. You know, there's there's some action there, but it's 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 soft. Okay, reach with the wrists, the fingers. Do the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, and spiral down to the left. So you're loading that up. You're reaching with the elbows. And turn. Feel the viscosity. What's the path of least resistance for the energy? Take your time, sink, feel soft. Relax your shoulders, your, your arms. Feel the ball of the right, the, feel the ball of the uh, left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the right, and reach to the elbows, reach to the wrists. Feel that connection, feel the viscosity, feel your attaching to it, and then you're turning. Feel the load in your left leg. The left ball, set the left knee and spiral down to the left. Hands open, feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, and then turn. Reaching with the elbows, feeling, feeling that space with your hands. To the left ball, set the left knee, and spiral down to the right. 
You're loading up the left leg, reach to the elbows, the wrists, and then turn. Feel, feel the forearm reaching out, expressing the turn of the body. Hands come down. Pivot. Step in. Take a moment, just feel into that. Feel the activity that's occurring in your body mind. Take a deep breath. And disappear the chi. Let it go. Dissolve into the emptiness. Take a seat, please. How'd that go? Thank you, Dick. <laughs> that was an enthusiastic thumb. <laughs> that was excellent. <laughs> Terrific. Good. Good. Real simple stuff, but it is so easily overlooked. And really get into that and make it a priority in your practice. And whatever you're already doing is. You're opening all kinds of new possibilities and, and, and everything. Cool. Uh, any questions, thoughts? All good? Okay, um, we've got a few minutes left. Oh, Valerie. Well, I was just gonna say it's, um... You know, it's always surprising, and today, obviously, as such, feeling just the air, you know, with my hands that are now the size of baseball mitts, <laughs> you know, and feeling that and, and being able to feel the pull and the push, it's, um, it's wonderful. Wonderful. Great. Good. Great, good, good. Yeah, we have an opportunity for bliss any moment we want, just by tuning into that. Because we can, just by tuning into that feeling, we can enter the present moment with more awareness than ever and just allow that to fill our whole state of being. And I'm not recommending that you stay in bliss, but it's a nice place to visit and, uh, and you know, have a little pied de terre there. You can go and hang out every now and then. And uh, uh, so it's one of those things that we can cultivate all of the neurotransmitters that are associated with that state. We can learn to, to activate those so that we can call on them. We can call on these, these different brain states that support that spiritual illumination because it is a body-mind-spirit integration. And if we can get them all working together, then it's not uh, such a serendipitous event that we go into, into the happy place. It is the happy place is something that we can 
we can access uh, much more often than, than you know, we, we ever thought possible. Rick, did you have some? Oh, Peter. Yeah, uh, two things. One, you know, because my hips have been painful, I just watched tonight. I didn't get out of my chair. Uh, yet, the exercise, my, uh, my hips were better by the end of the class, just following. <laughs> Great. Yeah, very interesting. And the, you know, the, uh, that quality of, you know, when you're like moving the skin and what you called sticky gin and feeling the air, it reminded me of, you know, sometimes when I do the um, sun style wave hands like clouds very slowly, and I, and I get a little bit lower, bend my knees a little bit more, um, or maybe independently, the, um, and I feel, I sort of feel the air, I feel a similar thing in my palms when I'm moving. Uh, that seems to also kind of uh, release the hips. There's a lightness, there's that's that, I don't know, you know, that connection in the hands move in that movement seems to open up and lighten, you know, the legs and the hips. Uh, some it, this, what you did tonight reminded me of that. I wonder if that's a similar thing. It's a great suggestion, Peter, that uh, a wave hands like, it doesn't have to be sun style, it can be any, any wave hands like clouds. It is beautiful exercise for cultivating that sensitivity. And, and since there's so much going on with that, that you can, direct your attention. You can, you, you get to make a choice which hand you want to activate at any given moment and, or both, you know, and you get to play with that. You get to get to say, okay, this one's yin, this one's yang. And, and you, it, it develops so many different uh, qualities uh, just by uh, practicing that. You can just spend, uh, spend a whole session just doing uh, cloud hands. And, and have that uh, very, uh, very fruitful session. Scott. Yeah, I just real quick, I was just, while I'm sitting here listening to you, I was pushing and pulling with my hands on my knees and it really makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and your knees like it, you know? <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Because it, it, you know, basically it's a massage. You know, you're just by, by, you know, moving the, you know, the, the skin, the fascia around. Uh, you are creating energy in that area, and it, uh, uh, stagnant chi will dispel, and the epigenetic noise will dispel, and you're bringing more happy juice into the, uh, into the spot. Jonathan. Just to, you know, follow up on that, Scott, I don't know if you remember a few years ago in Sedona, I was talking about a meditation thing I do where you put your hands on your thigh and you follow the movement of your thigh with your breath. Cause when you take a full breath in, you, it, it goes through your whole body and you can be sensitive to that movement. It's really, it's really kind of cool. Nice. Just, and it, you know, you're, now you're riding your hands, but with that extra intention, Rick has with the feeling of it, with what's going on, just brings a whole nother level of intensity to that, that experience. So the Buddha's instruction was to breathe through the whole body. So it kind of emphasizes that, not just this hyper focus on the nose or the belly, the, the, the full body experience. I had forgotten that exercise that you taught. That was a good one. Thank you. Great. Okay, thank you all so much. It's been, uh, been, been terrific. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Maria. Thank, thank you, Maria. You. Love you, Maria. Love you guys. Thanks, Maria. Love you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.